Hi, my name is Gillian Carter. I'm a research fellow from Queen's and I'm here today to talk to you about a study that I was involved in in which we investigated GPs' perceptions about end-of-life care for individuals living with dementia. Professor Kevin Brazil um, was the principal investigator on the study and our co-investigators were Dr Karen Galway, also from Queen's, Dr Jenny van der Steen from Leiden University in the Netherlands and also Professor Max Watson from the University of Ulster. Just to give you a little bit of background before I talk about the study, um, dementia is a life-limiting condition and it currently doesn't have any cure. Um, in dementia, the brain nerve cells are damaged and die more frequently than usual and without replacement. And Alzheimer's is the most common form of dementia with over 50% of cases. As you can see, it's a worldwide health issue. There's 35.6 million people reported to be living with dementia in 2010. And this is expected to double by 2030. In Northern Ireland alone, in 2011, it was reported that 19,000 individuals were living with dementia. And obviously, as the population in Northern Ireland increases and as people are living longer, this means that dementia is going to be a major public health and societal issue. If we consider the role of GPs, generally the GP is the first point of contact for any individual living with dementia. And as gatekeepers, they are well placed in order to recognise those early signs of dementia and to also then um, prevent, um, to have access to an enhanced range of healthcare professionals and also memory clinics, both of which are needed to help address the complexities of diagnosing dementia in those early stages. Now, early identification of dementia is, is really important so that interventions can be put into place and these have been shown to be beneficial to the individual living with dementia and also their family carers. For order, order for this to happen, GPs need to have a good knowledge of dementia and obviously be aware of the importance of recognising those early symptoms. However, in 2005, the Mental Health Services for Older People, in a survey they conducted, um, less than half of the GPs surveyed actually felt they had a sufficient level of training in order to diagnose and also to manage dementia. If we consider the palliative care community, um, traditionally this is focused on individuals living with advanced cancer. However, good quality end-of-life care should be available to all individuals with a chronic illness, and obviously this also includes dementia. One innovation is to adopt a palliative approach and this has the potential to promote anticipatory care planning, which also includes advanced care planning. Now, advanced care planning is when there's a voluntary discussion between the individual and their health care provider in order to um, determine their future goals of care and end-of-life care options. When you adopt a palliative approach, there's three key recommendations. The first of which is early care guidance. This means that the needs of the individual and also of the family carer are met throughout the whole um, illness trajectory. The second recommendation is there is an adaption of palliative care knowledge and expertise of any healthcare professional involved in the care of the individual. And the third recommendation is that there is an integration within the healthcare systems in which the evolving end of life care needs are addressed and recognised. If we compare the, the um, disease trajectories of somebody living with advanced cancer and someone with advanced dementia, with cancer patients there is generally a substantial decline in functioning in the last few weeks and months of life. However, with somebody with dementia there is generally a prolonged dwindling and generally there is a severe disability may actually persist for several years. 2014, the European Association of Palliative Care produced a white paper in which they defined the optimal palliative care in older people with dementia. In this paper, they recommended three key core domains for palliative care. These included, as you can see, the applicability of palliative care, communication, shared de decision making, um, advanced planning, also the support elements and education. Within these core domains, they um, grouped together 57 recommendations for practice policy and research and this was based on expert physicians in the field and also on 265 literature research articles. From this paper, the EIPC have produced a model of dementia progression and suggested prioritisation of care goals. In this model, it shows that there is changing care goals and priorities throughout the dementia trajectory. So at any one point, there may be more than one goal of care that is um, indicated 
but it may have a different relevance depending on the different stage of the dementia. So for example, if we consider somebody that has a moderate level of, of dementia, there's three um, goals of care that are indicated, but potentially maximization of comfort and maintenance of function may actually take priority over prolongation of life. If I return now to the study that we were involved in, we investigated GP's perceptions about end-of-life care for individuals living with dementia. This was conducted in Northern Ireland in 2013, and we based it on GP surgeries who have more than 30 dementia-registered patients. So that gave us a sample of 340 GPs, and that represented 174 <coughs> practices. It was a postal questionnaire, and this questionnaire was based on those EAPC core domains that I've just mentioned. And the questionnaire was called Care for Dementia Patients at the End of Life. As you can see, the survey had four sections. The first section had 24 statements in which the respondents could um, respond by saying on, the, on a grading of strongly disagree to strongly agree, on statements regarding perceptions of dementia as a terminal illness, on communication, on advanced care planning and on decision making. The second section was based on those EAPC domains of palliative care and dementia and this focused on the perceived importance of these particular aspects of care, the significance of them as a barrier and also the challenge of addressing these particular barriers. Section C was a free text section in which we offered the GPs the opportunity of um, writing down what they felt to be the three most significant barriers to providing good quality palliative care in their practice. And we also asked, if possible, that they could recommend some particular solutions. And then section D was the characteristics of the respondents. So the results. Overall, we had 138 responses. And this was just over a um, 40% response rate and represented nearly 61% of survey practices. Of the respondents, 50, just over 57% were male. The average age was just under 50 and the average time in practice was nearly 25 years. <clears throat> I don't have time now to go through all the results from each of the sections, so I've just highlighted a couple of the elements. From section A, in the statements which referred to describing advanced care planning about future care at the end of life for dementia, GPs were very divided onto whether advanced care planning should be initiated at diagnosis and if it should be frequently reviewed. Just under 83% of GPs felt that it should be the GP who takes the initiative to introduce advanced care planning. Just over 90% of the GPs felt they needed to have some standardised agreed format for an advanced care plan. And nearly 80% of the GPs surveyed felt that they needed training to improve their knowledge in order to involve families in the discussion about end-of-life care for someone with dementia. <clears throat> From section C, which was the free text section, in which we asked um, the GPs to provide what they felt to be the significant barriers to providing good quality palliative care, in this section, 84% of the individuals actually provided us with um, some responses. Uh, we analysed the transcripts from this, and from this we provided um, five main themes of barriers. The first theme, lack of knowledge and understanding, this was the most frequently cited barrier. And this not only covers the healthcare professionals, but also the family carers, the patients and the public. In particular, the recognition of the palliative nature of dementia. The second theme linked to limited funding, limited resources within the GP practices, limited access to community and specialist services, and also the, within the practice itself, the significant time pressures that the GPs are under. In the third theme, um, GPs were concerned with inappropriate medical treatments, intervention, hospitalizations of individuals living with dementia. They also highlighted the difficulties they had with assessments, with diagnosis, and also with the prognosis. And generally, they felt there was a lack of standardized um, guidelines in order to help inform them with the decisions. A breakdown in communication and disjointed team were blamed um, for issues with integration and access, particular specialist support. And obviously, this had a negative impact on the continuity of care for the individual with dementia. And then finally, with regards to the family, the GPs felt that there was an inadequate supply of social services for the family carers, in particular respite care. However, they also said that, that they had challenges with family resistance and also disagreements within the families themselves. 
So what does this mean for practice? From this work, we've actually identified two main themes that are implications for practice. The first of which is enhanced education. In this, we feel there should be interventions to promote GP knowledge and skills in order to match those complex requirements of somebody with dementia. Research has already shown that there is insufficient basic and post-qualifying training in dementia, and this was published by the British Journal of GPs in 2010. And education of the healthcare team has been highlighted by the EAPC as one of their core domains. We have seen that um, GPs need to be more knowledgeable and more proactive with regards to advanced care planning. But from this, public education is essential, not only to improve um, community awareness of dementia, but also to highlight the importance of advanced care planning. And one particular strategy is that they need to have educational strategies directed towards the family carers and the patients in order for them to um, make those decisions and to have those discussions. In another study that we're currently working on, um, Kevin Brazil is the principal investigator on that, and we have a particular educational tool that we are using. It's in the form of a booklet, and this booklet um, is called <coughs> it's a comfort care booklet um, at the end, looking at the end of life decisions for somebody with dementia. The study we are looking at the currently is 25 care homes in Northern Ireland, and it's called promoting informed decision making and effective communication through advanced care planning for people with dementia and their family carers. Now this particular booklet that we're using as the um, intervention um, was originally developed in Canada by Arcand and Karen in 2005. It has already demonstrated a high level of acceptability in other countries including Italy and Japan and it has been identified as a best practice instrument by the World Health Organization European office. Now for the purpose of our study we had to adapt the booklet so that was in the format of the Northern Ireland context. As you can see it's just a small booklet and from the 25 care homes the um, participants from it who were primary carers or the next of kin of somebody who's living with advanced dementia and no longer could make decisions for themselves. We provided a selected number of them with this booklet. They read through the booklet and then after that they had a meeting with an advanced care plan facilitator and from that produced an advanced care plan for their loved one. Now the booklet is in a frequently asked question format and as you can see it has five sections. It looked at the natural evolution of dementia, the decisions about end of life, the relief of symptoms, the final moments, and then after the death. Now, I completed individual interviews with the participants who had the booklet, and I also did interviews with the care home managers and the ACP facilitator herself. And so far, the, the feedback has been extremely positive about the booklet um, with regards to its content and its usefulness. Um, some individuals have hung on to the booklet, saying that they're actually going to provide it to other, other friends who are in a similar situation and others also said they wish they'd received it earlier on. Going back to the implications for practice, so the first thing we recognised was enhanced education. The second theme is a shared care model. This is because there's a requirement for a substantial amount of multidisciplinary support in order to recognise those complex needs of somebody with dementia. The core of good clinical practice is good interdisciplinary teamwork, but poor communication and poor integration can actually have a negative impact on the palliative care provision. Formulating a personalised shared care plan can help to actually facilitate the access between the GP, the primary care community, emergency services, secondary care and social services. And as we have said, GPs are in a commanding position to identify those early signs of dementia and to access those healthcare professionals. However, this must have an integrated and holistic team approach in order to improve the patient outcomes. And again, this was one of the EAPC's core domains. So what are the key messages? First one is, GPs are in a pivotal position to initiate and adapt care for individuals living with dementia. They are the gatekeepers to other health services, including specialised dementia services and palliative services. However, GPs have expressed a limited confidence in their assessment and of their knowledge of dementia. Healthcare professionals and family carers have a difficulty in characterising dementia as a terminal illness. A palliative approach would be beneficial to this because it recognises the uncertain course 
of dementia and also of the inability of the individual living with dementia to make those decisions later on in the condition. The question is, is there sufficient GP dementia training and healthcare professional support? It seems that there's not. There is a perceived dementia knowledge deficit alongside significant resource shortfalls with conflict with the family members and within the families themselves and also the impact of a poor integrated team care, the impact it has on the continuity of care. A personalised shared care and support plan of treatment goals can help to facilitate holistic care. Part of this is advanced care planning, which is a mechanism to facilitate communication and decision making so that people can make decisions about their future at a time when they won't be able to. Therefore, using a shared care and support plan will actually allow optimal timing of these discussions to happen, and it would happen on an individual basis. These discussions can be enhanced by an educational tool, such as the Comfort Care booklet, but these strategies not only need to be directed at the family carers and the patients, but also to the GPs, so that there's an optimal patient-centred care provided. And finally, there needs to be a shared care model. This is to demonstrate the integration between the GP services and the primary care, with emergency services, secondary care and social services. And this is in order to improve the access to good quality palliative care, as this is a necessity to provide best practice for end of life care for individuals living with dementia. But for this to happen, it requires the cooperation, the communication and the integration of all healthcare professionals. These are um, three papers that we've had published from the GP survey and also the reference to the white paper that I referred to from the EAPC. Thank you for your time.